Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the adaptive immune response and immunosuppressants. Okay, so we're now discussing B cell activation within the humoral uh, adaptive immune response. So, the antigen that we have launched the T cell response against has now percolated through uh, the lymph node uh, lymphocytes and has just happened to come across a B cell that uh, has a B cell receptor which has uh, the ability to bind to this antigen. Now what's going to happen is that B cell is going to endocytose the entire B cell receptor. And I'm now going to have to draw the B cell much bigger to be able to show this. Okay, so here's our B cell. I'm going to draw the vesicle first. So it of course won't be this big. It will be tiny little vesicle in comparison to the nucleus. But I just can't draw um, a tiny little vesicle because you won't be able to see it. So we've endocytosed the entire B-cell receptor here, which is, remember, this uh, membrane-bound antibody-like structure. Okay, and it's got this antigen bound to it in blue here. Okay, so let me highlight the uh, B-cell receptor back up. So here are the heavy chains of the B-cell receptor in, or whoops, in orange here. Okay, and they're linked by disulfide bonds there. And then... Uh, we have these two light chains of the B cell receptor, which are in pink here. Okay, and they have the antigen now bound to them. Okay, and then here is the nucleus of the um, B cell. Okay, and this is still a naive B cell at the moment. It has never been activated before. Okay, now it's basically got in this endocytic vesicle an antigen to break down. And it's going to break down that antigen process it, and it's going to put fragments of that antigen on its surface on which MHC complex? Well, this isn't a phagosome, but it's at the same sort of thing. So anything that's been engulfed by a cell is going to be put on MHC class 2, whereas things that are actually in the cytoplasm of the cell, they will be put on MHC class 1, and we'll see all of that when we do the cytoplasmic uh, cell-mediated response. Okay, so, again, it's going to stick the antigen fragments on MHC class 2. Now, one of these antigen fragments will be the antigen fragment that these T-helper 2 cells are against. So let's say it's this antigen fragment here, okay? And remember, this is just a fragment. It's not the entire antigen. And I know this is quite confusing that I'm drawing the antigen in the same way as the antigen fragment, but I don't really have a solution to that. So this was the entire antigen, okay? Whereas this is the antigen fragment. That's the best I can do. Um, <laughs> label them up to try and circumvent the confusion. Right. Now, this B cell will also put co-stimulatory molecules on. So it's a professional antigen-presenting cell as well. It puts co-stimulatory molecules on. So it will be being exposed to pathogen-associated molecular patterns as well. All of these molecules will be coming in through the lymph and they'll be uh, reaching these B cells. So the B cells will have pattern recognition receptors on their surface which will be activated by the PAMPs and that will then lead to the B cell starting to express CD40 and either B7.1 or B7.2 or you could have both but only one is actually needed. So let's put these here. So we'll have um, CD40 in yellow here Okay, so this is CD40, and I know I've swapped it around in order, that's just trivial, it's because I didn't have enough space to put it here and I've put the labels there. Okay, so I'm sorry if that's confused anyone. Okay, so here's in pink, and that's either B7.1 or B7.2. Now what's going to happen is one of these T-helper 2 cells is going to come along, okay, and we know this has a complementary T cell receptor for this antigen. Oh, and I should have labeled that antigen fragment. I do apologize. That was the whole point of putting the labels on to distinguish between the antigen over here and the antigen fragment. Sorry about that. Okay, so it will have a T cell receptor which is complementary perfectly for that antigen fragment. So let's cover this in, in pink here. 
the, or vivid purple this is really. Okay, so this is our T-cell receptor, and of course there's another molecule that now needs to bind to the MHC class 2, which is the CD4 that's still on the surface of these um, T-helper 2 cells. Okay, so I'll label this up as a T-helper 2 cell. Okay, and I'll colour in CD4 over here in orange. Right, so that is CD4, cluster of differentiation or cluster of designation 4. Okay, and then of course you have uh, the receptors for each of these co-stimulatory molecules. So the receptor for uh, the B7.1 or B7.2 is CD28. Okay, and I'll colour that in in turquoise. So here is CD28. And then the receptor for CD40 here in yellow, okay, is then CD40 ligand. Right. So we'll have CD40 ligand in not in orange. Which colour have I not used yet? Uh, red, I haven't used. Okay, so here is um, a CD40 ligand. And let me just label up the final little molecules here. So we haven't labelled up uh, B7.1 or B7.2. So this is B7.1 slash B7.2. And I tend to prefer those names rather than the CD80, CD86, merely because everything else is named CD, so it makes a nice difference to use B rather than uh, CD. Okay, and then this is MHC class 2, Major Histocompatibility Complex class 2. Okay, right. Now, what's going to happen when uh, the B cell presents all of this to this T helper 2 cell is that the T helper 2 cell is going to give the B cell what is known as T cell help, okay? And this is all still happening within the lymph node. So the B cell is within the lymph node. There's still only one B cell, but there is a whole population of these T helper 2 cells. So eventually the B cell will meet one of these T helper 2 cells, and this will happen. And what's now going to happen is it's going to induce this B cell to divide and divide and divide and divide, okay? So you're going to get a huge, great population of B cells, basically, which all have a B cell receptor that is, and I'm going to say this word, based on the B cell receptor of this original one. And that's an important thing to understand, that they're not all going to be identical. So before we discuss what I mean by that, let me just discuss the fact that if you have a whole bunch of B cells that are dividing and dividing and dividing, what is this going to mean for the B cell follicle? Well, basically, what happens is you get the appearance of these structures within the B cell follicle. So if this is the B cell follicle here, so I'll highlight this in green. This is the rest of the B cell follicle. And this inner circle is this population now of B cells that has been produced from this single B cell that's been activated now by the T helper 2 cell. Okay, so before when we saw these complexes, it was the T cell that was being activated, but now it's the B cell that's going to be activated, not the T cell. So the T helper 2 cell is activating the B cell. So all of these uh, molecules, the MHC class 2, the B7.1, B7.2, CD40, they are going to cause the activation of the B cell, basically, and also the T helper 2 cell releases certain molecules which help the B cell. So the B cell is going to start dividing and dividing and dividing, and you're going to get this population of cells emerging within the B cell follicle, and they're a slightly different colour. They look different if you look at them underneath a microscope. Sorry, I shouldn't have said they're a slightly different colour. They appear different if you look at them underneath the microscope. You can see this patch of cells uh, distinctly, and this patch of cells is what's known as a germinal centre. Okay. So, let's now go back to my comment about how they don't all have the identical B cell receptor. Okay, because this is quite ingenious what's going to follow. This is the most complicated bit as far as understanding goes in the entire story. Okay, so let's do this slowly. All of these B cells that you are producing will now have a slightly modified B cell receptor. And you might ask, why? 
Why? Well, what's going to happen is you're going to start a process known as affinity maturation. You're going to try to improve the affinity of this B-cell receptor for this antigen. It's already good, otherwise the antigen wouldn't have bound to the B-cell receptor in the first place. Uh, but we want to try and make it optimal. We want to try and get it as good as it could possibly be. So we are going to start up a process of natural selection, basically. And what's the starting point for a process of natural selection? Well, you have to have variation within the population. You can't have natural selection until you've got variation in the population. So what you are going to do is a process known as somatic hypermutation. Every single one of the B cells that you produce from this original B cell, i.e. all of the B cells in this germinal center, they're going to make tiny little mutations to their B cell receptors, okay? So that all of them have different B cell receptors. So this one here, which we'll call B cell 1, will have a different B cell receptor from B cell 2 over here, okay? So they'll all be slightly different and it will have, again, a slightly different B-cell receptor from B-cell 3 over here. And, of course, you won't just have 3, you'll have a huge number of them. Now, how are we going to start a process of natural selection? We've got variation. Now we need something... Um, to, we need a survival criterion, basically. Now, we want to select for B-cells which have the best possible B cell receptor for binding to the antigen. So naturally, what we need to set as our survival criterion is that these B cells bind the antigen. They must only survive if they bind the antigen, basically. And those that don't bind the antigen should die. Okay, now, what you have within these B cell follicles are a type of cell known as a follicular dendritic cell, and these are going to play an important role, okay? And these again have these dendrite structures, and again they're unrelated to the dendritic cells that we saw earlier, uh, and they're completely unrelated to neurons, okay? So these are follicular dendritic cells, they just happen to have dendrites. Okay, so this is a follicular dendritic cell. And follicular dendritic cells are often abbreviated to FDCs for short. Okay, FDC. Right, now, what follicular dendritic cells do is they are sitting in the B cell follicles, and as lymph percolates through the cortex and the paracortex of the lymph node to get to the uh, medullary sinus, these follicular dendritic cells grab onto antigens that are passing by, basically. So they are coated in antigens. Now, they will grab onto some of these antigen molecules that we are specifically launching this immune response against. So we are studying the immune response for a single antigen um, specifically this antigen that we've been working with from the beginning, okay? So this antigen, along with loads of other antigens, and the other ones will have immune responses as well, we're just not studying those, okay? Um, but some of this antigen will remain bound on the surface of the follicular dendritic cells. Okay, so here it is in blue. So we're studying the uh, humoral immune response to blue antigen, but of course the process is exactly the same for all the other antigens as well. Okay, so some blue antigen will remain bound to the follicular dendritic cells. Now, these B cells, to survive, they need to get this antigen, and there is a limited amount of it, basically. So, you've got competition. You've got a huge population of B cells, all with slightly different B-cell receptors, and to survive, they have to bind the antigen. So which ones are going to get the antigen? The ones which have the best B-cell receptor. So they are going to survive, and the others are going to die. So only the ones that get the antigen, which have the best affinity for binding the B-cell, uh, sorry, the best, who have a B-cell receptor which has the highest affinity for binding uh, to the antigen, only those are going to survive. Okay, so, those uh, B-cells with the best 
new B cell receptor, they will get antigen. So antigen will bind to their B cell receptor. And then the exact same process begins again. So once they've got antigen bound to their B cell receptor, they internalize it, just like this original B cell did, and they then break it down into fragments, and they put fragments on their surface with MHC class 2. They also will be activated by the pamps that are gushing through the lymph node in the lymph, and therefore they will also put co-stimulatory molecules on their surface. And those B cells will then go and find another T helper 2 cell, and they will go through the whole process again. They'll form this uh, interaction, which is actually, by the way, known as an immune synapse. That's quite a nice uh, description for this. So it's called an immune synapse. So they'll form one of these immune synapses with a, another T helper 2 cell, and that's how they survive. They get this T cell help, and that triggers them to survive. In fact, it triggers more than just their survival. It triggers them to divide and divide and divide and divide and divide again and produce a whole population of B cells from themselves. So, let's say this B cell here, B cell 2, was far better than B cell 1 and B cell 3. So let's say B cell 1 suffered a mutation which actually made its B cell receptor worse. Let's say B cell 3 suffered a mutation that made its B cell receptor slightly better, but B cell 2 suffered a mutation which made its um, B cell receptor absolutely fantastic for binding to the antigen. So it gets this antigen here. It will take two, these two pieces, okay? And B cell 3, even though it was good, won't get anything, basically. And B cell 1 certainly won't get anything. So B cell 2 then undergoes this process, internalizes the B cell receptor with the antigen, presents a fragment of the antigen on MHC class 2, puts the co-stimulatory molecules on its surface, forms an immune synapse with another T helper 2 cell, and then uh, is going to divide and divide and divide and divide, producing a whole population from itself. Okay, so here it's now produced a whole population of new cells. So shall I call these 2.1 2.2 because they're all based on B cell 2 and then 2.3 over here okay and again all of these will undergo somatic hypermutation again so they will all have a variant of this B cell uh, receptor so they're all going to have B cell receptors that are based on the B cell receptor of B cell 2 uh, but they will um, all be slightly different because they've all suffered little mutations in the B cell receptor since uh, B cell receptor 2. Well, or B cell 2's B cell receptor. Okay, whereas B cell 1 and B cell 3, they didn't bind antigen, so they don't get T cell help because they have nothing to present to the T cell, and therefore they die. If they don't get T cell help, they apoptose. So the germinal center is full of apoptosing B cells. Okay, so you continue this process on and on. With this population, you do the same thing. There's a limited supply of antigen, and only the B cells which outcompete the others, which have the best B cell receptor for binding to the antigen, will survive. And you continue this process on and on, and the population of B cells that you have within this germinal center gradually gets higher and higher affinity B cell receptors for the antigen. Okay, so we'll continue this discussion in the next video.